I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Folks, I have a confession to make today. I'm a cheater. I cheated with a quad. I built a cheater quad. What do you, what do you think I meant? I built a cheater quad, and that's a quadcopter with a front-facing and a backwards-facing camera so that you can switch which way it looks like you're flying and fly backwards. You could basically do Matty flips, but to you, it just looks like you're flying forwards the whole time. And I did a whole build video where I showed you guys how I built the cheater quad, but I didn't show you how to set it up. There are a few steps you need to do to get the cheater quad set up in your transmitter and in your flight controller. And that's what I'm gonna show you today, how to set up your cheater quad. And I've got some flight video for you too. Stay tuned. Now I have finished setting up Betaflight on this quad. I've done my full basic Betaflight setup. And if you need help with that, I've got a video, Betaflight 3.4 and 3.5 setup for total beginners that walks you through the entire setup. In fact, I've got another video, which is learn to build this quadcopter, which is a full quadcopter build and setup guide for total noobs. And I got links to those down in the video description. But what we're gonna focus on here is setting up the, um, the camera switching. So. If we look at the Lux F7 user manual, we can see that mode user two is used to switch the cameras. So we're gonna go down here in the Betaflight modes tab to mode user two, and we're gonna to need to decide on our transmitter, which switch we're gonna to use to flip these modes. It's gonna be a two position switch. I'm gonna use the three position on my left index finger on the underside. Now I'm using the Flysky Nirvana here. Um, I've just started working with this transmitter and trying it out. Um, the firmware has finally gotten to a point where I feel it's mature enough to, to start really paying attention to. Um, if you're not using it, that's okay. Open any OpenTX radio works very, very similar to this. So here in the radio, I'm going to go to the mixer screen. Uh, on the Tyrannus X9D, you would just press menu and then page to the mixer screen. I'm gonna pick an unused channel. Here's channel eight. And I'm gonna add on the, on the X9D, you would long press enter and add a new mix. The source is going to be, what's that switch? It's gonna be SWF. Um, so I'm gonna find that in the list. On the Tyrannus, you would simply flip the switch. You would edit and flip the switch. SWF, and that's it. And then I'm gonna go here to mode user two, add range and flip that switch one time. And it will auto discover which aux channel is associated with that range. Now, so it looks like what the user manual is telling me is that when the mode is active, camera two is on and camera one is off, when the mode is inactive, camera one is on and camera two is off. I'm not sure which of those I want it to be because I'm not sure whether camera one is front facing or camera two is front facing. So hold on, I'm gonna need to get my goggles. So am I looking toward the front camera or the back camera? So that is the front camera. Okay, that's good, that's where I want it. So this switch mode is set up how I want it. The front camera is with the switch pushing away and the rear camera is with the switch pulled towards. If I wanted to reverse that, I could just move this down here and it would reverse the logic. Um, one thing you're gonna notice is that if I flip the cameras, oh yeah, but there's a little bit of a problem. You see how the DVR has gone all weird and funky? That's because I'm using rapid fire. One of the cool tricks that rapid fire does is to lock on to the sync signal from the camera. And that means that when we switch cameras, it gets unhappy. So if you're using rapid fire with a cheater quad, you're gonna wanna go into the menu and you're gonna to wanna to change the RF mode to legacy. And that will make the switch much smoother. So let's see what happens now when we switch. Oh yeah, perfect. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, so we've got the camera switching. Now, there's one more thing we need to do. And that is we need to make the controls work because when we flip around to looking the other way, the sticks aren't gonna work the same as they did. So let's think about this for a second. <laughs> when we roll to the left, so, so this is the front of the camera, right? And this is the rear. When we roll to the left from the perspective of the front of the camera, what are we doing from the perspective of the rear of the camera? We're rolling to the right. 
So when we flip the camera, the, the roll axis is going to be reversed. Okay. The yaw axis, when from the front of the camera, we yaw to the left, we're also yawing to the left or the right. That does, the yaw axis doesn't change. Okay. So fine. For the pitch axis, when from the front perspective, we pitch forward, from the rear perspective, we're pitching back. So the gist of it is that when we flip the camera, we also need to flip the roll and pitch axis, just invert the roll and pitch axis, and then everything, the quad will still fly just like it did. And that's the secret to the cheater quad. So here's how we do that in the radio. In order to show you this, I'm going to move over to the bench so you can have the best possible view of the screen with my downward facing camera. And as you can see, I am demonstrating this using the FlySky slash underground FPV Nirvana. Um, this, it's, it's just open TX and the steps are exactly the same. If you're using something like an X9D or a QX7, just the controls will be slightly different. You're going to use the menu and the enter key instead of tapping, but the gist of what you're trying to set up is the same. And what I need to do is I need to go into my elevator and my aileron control channels. That's pitch and roll. And we'll start with the aileron channel. And what I want to do is I want to copy this mix and paste after. So now I have two aileron mixes. And you may recall I previously set up this switch to be my camera switching switch, right? So this way and that way. Okay, this way is going to be front camera, that way is going to be rear camera. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one of these aileron mixes be active when the switch is one way, and one be active when the switch is the other way. So let's tap on this and edit it. Now, normally a mix is active all the time, but I can go down to the switch parameter, and if I put something in the switch parameter, the mix only becomes active when the given switch is in the given position. So this first line is going to be active all the time, regardless of switch position. And that is our normal mix. The second line is going to become active when switch SWF is in the down position. In other words, when I've got my backwards facing camera, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my multiplex mode to replace. And by doing that, what that's going to do is it's going to cause this second mixer line to replace the first one. Perfect. So when the switch is in the up or middle position, that's the front camera. And we need to make sure that this matches up because actually I'm not 100% sure what the middle position is on the cameras. But this is the front camera. That's the rear camera. Let's make sure that the mixes match. Mixing logic matches the camera logic. So great. So now the last thing I need to do is edit the second mix and we're actually going to invert it. And we're going to do that by making the weight be not minus 500. Come on. Can I just type it? No. Okay. That's unfortunate. Is there not a faster way to do this? Oh my gosh. Are you for real? Um, that's too bad. Do to do to do do to do to do do to do 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 do. Minus 100 is what I want. There we go. That didn't take too long. So by setting the weight to minus 100 instead of 100, we invert the channel. So if we go to the channel monitor, we can see that if I hold roll all the way to the left and then flip that switch, the roll channel inverts. Perfect. That's what I want. Now we're going to do the same thing for the pitch channel and I'll do that off camera. All right. It's time for the final check that everything is as it should be. Definitely check this stuff before you go fly or you could end up with a nasty surprise. So the first thing I'll check is just the arming and disarming. All good. We're arming and disarming. Now, I am using the front facing camera. Let's double check that. Yep, that's the front of the quad. And when I arm, when I arm the, let's see, if I push roll right, Roll right, the right hand motor speed up, roll left, the left hand motor speed up. I have to raise my idle speed here. And for pitch, pitch back, the front motors speed up, pitch forward, the rear motors speed up. Okay, everything is correct. Now, let's flip to the middle position. The camera will not move, but let's just double check that everything still works correctly. 
right, we roll right, the right motors are speeding up. Roll left, the left motors are speeding up. Good, and pitch back and forward. Okay, excellent. Now I'm gonna to go to the full forward position. The camera will switch and I'm gonna arm. And when I roll to the right, it should be this way. Oh, hang on. Let's just turn it around so I'm not confused. Okay, so now the backwards facing camera is facing away from me. I'm gonna arm and let's see, roll right. Should be these motors speeding up. Yep, and pitch back. Yep, we're ready to go. We have a working cheater quad. The only thing left is to maiden it and see how it flies. And that's what I'm gonna show you, the flight footage from right this minute. And now here it is what you've all been waiting for, the actual flight footage of the cheater quad. And I must confess that I am not the one you're looking at flying here. This is actually Alex Vanover flying, and this is not our first packs. It actually took us a little while to figure out how to make the transition smooth and how to figure out what looks good from the rearward facing camera and what is, oh, you're just staring at the sky. That's not that interesting. And in fact, I've got a whole episode of Rotor Riot that we've, we, we've got a whole episode of Rotor Riot that we've recorded. Me, Alex Vanover, Vortex, and Ladrib. And that's going to be coming out on the Rotor Riot channel in a couple of weeks as we get, sort of get our feet wet with the Cheater Quad and, and kind of figure it out all together. And these guys really impressed me with how quickly they picked it up. It's not obvious, but they picked it up really quickly. And I think you'll really enjoy that. In the meantime, I'm going to leave you just this one flight of... Alex Vanover flying and doing some moves and stuff, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, there are links to all of the equipment that we used in this build, including the Luminaire Lux F7 Ultimate Flight Controller with built-in camera switching, makes uh, Cheater Quad easier than ever, and the Ripped Quads Lindworm Frame. We crashed the dickens out of it in the course of shooting this video and uh, just kept coming back for more. So really happy about that. All of those links down there, as you may have heard, are affiliate links. And one of the ways you can help support the channel is by clicking those links before you make any purchase from one of the affiliated vendors. You do not have to buy the exact product that's linked to. Anytime you shop at one of those affiliated vendors, click one of my affiliate links. And when you make the purchase, I get a small commission and it really does help me out. If you enjoy this content, if I've helped you out building a cheater quad, you can also help me out by joining my Patreon. There is a link down in the video description and you can just throw a couple bucks a month at me and it does add up and it really does matter. If you're thinking about building a cheater quad, I have to say, definitely do it. It is not just a dumb novelty. I kind of thought it was a dumb novelty, but it really shakes up your experience of flying the quad and gives you a sort of a new tool in your palette for how to make interesting videos. And it's just really fun and different and interesting. And I think everybody who was in the Rotorite video started out thinking, yeah, whatever, I'll give it a try. And at the end of the video, we're like, whoa, this is, I mean, it's not like it's going to become your everyday quad, but it is something that the, everybody said they wanted to build one and were interested in flying it some more. So if you're the if you're the least bit curious about this, definitely give it a go. It's really fun, interesting, and different. Definitely also check out Dividing by Zero FPV on YouTube or just look up the hashtag Cheater Quad hashtag uh, to find more examples of flight video from people flying Cheater Quads, flying much better than us. We're just like on our, you know, fifth pack here, which is what you're seeing. Vanover is still pretty good for his fifth pack. Screw him. But <laughs> definitely check those things out. That's going to bring us to the end of this video, though. Look forward to the Rotor Riot video with, with us figuring out the Cheater Quad coming out in a few weeks. I'll definitely let you know when that comes out as well. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.